Welcome back to the channel if you guys are doing good. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how I achieve cinematic looks working with SLO 3D footage in Premiere Pro. By the way, if you're interested, I have free lot converter for SLO 3 in the link in the bio. Let's get into it. Just my layer and then I tag it up, extend it, and then I always put my base layer right now. This are X log 3 footage, so S log 3 being its flat images. And then, next first step I usually do is I just apply my lot, it's a lot converter, S log 3 lot converter, and then that takes it from that takes it from this to this, this to this. And then literally my next step right after I apply my S log 3 footage is what I usually do is right away I go into my footage file itself and I go into my Lumetri scope. By the way, you want to be in the color tab when doing this. And then after I do that right away, I go down to my footage itself. And then I usually first off drop my saturation. That's the literal first step I always do. And then I just try to get my blacks and white correct. So I go down to my curves. And then I drag my shadow right down, pretty much close to, to 10, between 10 to zero IRE. And then I increase my highlights as well, just to put some spark into it. And then literally just from doing that simple step, I'm able to get my footage from this to this. You see it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more rich. And then right after doing that, um, next step I usually do is automatically, I try to get my white balance. So as you can tell, my subject is right around this middle. So I don't know if you've ever noticed when you play your footage, you see it's moving. So usually it tells me my subject is right around this spot, right around this spot right here. And then I try to just get my white balance. I always try to, I might zoom in a little bit more just to get closer to my white. And then right around there. And then I should have balanced to get my white. So right now, from a visual perspective, it looks a little bit more warm. So I like to add in some warm to it. Actually, no, I add in a little bit more cool to it. So I bump in my cool a little bit right there. And then I add in some magenta as well. That's a little bit too much. Just a tiny little bit. Okay, maybe the opposite way. Add some greens. This is just a visual tell. And then this is just from the basic correction. And then I usually just bump my contrast shadows a little bit more. I bump my highlights a little bit more. Bump my whites a little bit more. And then the next step that I do, this is kind of where I get the film look, is create a new item, adjust my layer. Actually, I just, I'll just copy this. Yeah, yeah. And then this is my color grading tab. And then literally what I just do on this tab is I go down to my color wheels and match. And then my tonality I try to go for is I try to add a little bit a little bit of opposite spectrum. So if I'm going for magenta, which is pink, I'll drop it down a little bit. This is my brightness slide, so I bright up a little bit. And then in my highlights, I go the opposite. So I add a little bit more green in that spectrum right around there. And then I Drop it down, just add some contrast to that. And then this is literally before and after. Before and after. Before and after. Actually, maybe, you know what? I might bump up the highlights a little because I like that highlight brightness. Mm -hmm. So before and after, before and after. And this is what it looks like right there. Just from that little and then also what I do as well is I go down to my vignette and I add a little bit of vignette just to give it some f focus. I try to feather it a little bit so it's a little bit spread out. And then, yeah, my final is just adding that film look, the S curve. Drop it down a 
little bit, take this up a little bit, and take this up a little bit, put it out a little bit, and then our ring has gone up a little bit more. Let's see, it's giving that S, S look. And yeah, and then this is before, after, before, after, before, after, before, after. And this is the final look. This is, yeah. And then the same principle applied to different look right there. Same look. My biggest advice always is when you're working with SLOF 3 footage, you want to do your first base edit. So after converting, after converting, after converting from S-Log3 to Rec 709, you want to do your first edit, like basic correction, or like color correction on the footage itself. And then you make an adjustment layer and then you do some color grading. So it's a three step process. First step is S-Log3 converter. Next step is do some color grading, basic correct color correction on the footage itself. And the next step is color grading. And this is some footage of before and after. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.